It has been quite a week in terms of politics. Um, I'm, it's been such a busy week that at the end of the day, I'm not quite sure um, what's happened. As in, I know a lot's happened, but if I told you asked me to say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's all been a bit of a blur. One thing we do know by the end of this week is that the media are not going to be giving Winston Peters or this government um, a, a honeymoon period. They are miffed, they're upset, they didn't like the election result. They don't like, um, didn't like the coalition agreements that were released last Friday. Uh, they've advertised any. Oh, sorry, they've um, yes, they have advertised in actual fact and promoted almost every critic that they can possibly find to criticise and cauterise aspects of the coalition agreement. And they certainly didn't like the fact um, that who got what, um, and that they are being chided by all variety of people, um, and uh, cha policies are being changed. Um, it's almost as if the media have decided, as I was commented earlier this week, that they didn't like the election and they're determined to undo it, given that the Labour Party couldn't. You do have to ask yourself at the end of the day, who is the true upholder of democracy and who is the true saboteur and destroyer? And I would suggest to you that the mainstream media this week have proven themselves very much to be in the latter camp. But joining us for what has been a momentous personal week for him... He's been a regular correspondent with the platform um, and somebody who is now an honourable Mark Patterson and that is New Zealand First MP and Cabinet Minister Mark Patterson and he joins us now. Mark, congratulations. It is a very singular feat and a very exclusive club that you have joined, my friend. Yeah, good morning, Michael, and thank you very much. Yeah, I'm pretty humbled actually and, and really honoured to be uh, given that responsibility and, and feel a, a duty to give it my absolute best shot. Well, I, I bet it's also for you quite a change because when you think a year ago where you were and where you are now, you couldn't possibly have anticipated that you'd be the Honourable Mark Patterson, would you? No, no I mean even really a week ago, uh, you know, it was a big achievement as we've discussed before on the show just for New Zealand first to get back into Parliament and to, to be an MP again and you know, I, I hadn't unlike a lot of maybe other people that are now ministers or in the Cabinet uh, that they would have had some time to prepare, uh, I, I really didn't so you know, I'm still kind of coming to terms with that a little bit but you know, there's no time to too much self-reflection where you know, we've got a a lot of work to do and, and determination to to be decisive and uh, do it quickly. No, that's fair enough. Now, you are in charge of what portfolios? Uh, so I'm the Minister of uh, Rural Communities and I'm an Associate Minister for Agriculture. So Minister of Rural Communities, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Do, do you have a ministry or is it a collection of ministries that are responsible to you? Uh, it's part of MPI, um, but, you know, by its very nature, it's a very wide brief. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously rural communities uh, need the same services that, uh, you know, urban communities need, uh, more or less. So, you know, it's, it's about making sure that their interests are not, um, foregone uh, for the you know because where the towns are and the bigger populations and the more voters so sometimes the danger is those rural communities get so get overlooked and there is a rural proofing uh, a lot of cabinet papers go forward with a rural proofing um, element to it uh, so that it describes how how piece of legislation would. Uh, affect rural communities, so you know we are in charge of overseeing that. So is that a new portfolio, though, Mark? I, I don't recall it being in the last cabinet, but was it, or the the cabinet of the people gone? No, it was. It was brought in under the the last government. Damien O'Connor held it. Oh, okay. For a while, uh, Kieran McInulty, I believe, was the last one to hold it. But they, for them, it was now jumped onto what is. Uh, with larger portfolios or, or additional portfolios where I'll have a chance to really focus in on some of this. And, you know, I've lived in rural communities in my life. We've got a real affinity and passion. I think I understand them and, and you know, I think I can be a good advocate for them. No, I mean, it's, a, it's an essential role. You're absolutely right. Um, how do you perceive the state of rural communities as, you know, at the start of your ministerial tenure? What do you, what do you see as the issues affecting them now? How, how, what sort of health do you regard them to be in? 
Uh, well, they're actually in better health than what people realise. That they're starting to grow again. I think there was the the, the zombie town. Uh, mm-hmm. narrative that was out about 10 years ago but the stats are actually showing that uh, there is uh, repopulations in the region and particularly post-COVID as people reassess their life choices but in terms of infrastructure um, and, and the like uh, you know behind the eight ball uh, we've obviously specifically to you know with a cyclone recovery which is going to be an early part of my focus you know we're going to make sure that those communities aren't forgotten as you know, everyone rallies around at the start, but then, you know, the new cycle drifts on and we've got to make sure there's, you know, so that's a real priority for me to get up there and check those out. But um, and a lot of it, of course, uh, economically at the moment, it, it's all driven by agriculture um, for the most part. And, you know, we've got to get the agriculture sector back up and, and you know, the confidence up and running, get some profitability back in there, take some of the red tape away, uh, get the farmers back, focusing on farming rather than worrying about what the rules are. And, you know, that, that's fundamental for, for getting these communities pumping. Uh, just give me a definition of rural, though, because I'm thinking to myself, as oh, you're talking you're talking about cyclone recovery, and I'm thinking, well, you're probably not going to go to Napier or to Hastings or Gisborne. Is wire or rural, for example, and then the smaller communities like, what, Pukitapu and um, uh, Mahia and those sorts of... Uh, is What's the definition of rural to you, Mark? Uh, now, that is a very good question, Michael, because that was uh, what I I asked in my first briefing, you know, what, what are we actually talking about here? What's the criteria? And, and one of the problems that they've alluded to, that there is no standardised uh, definition in the way the government gathers its statistics for rural. So that's very much something that's on our radar if we want to be able to reflect the concerns of rural New Zealand, we've we've actually got to understand, you know, about to quantify what, you know, where the gaps are and if we've got a, a data set that's all over the place. So I have been talking to uh, Andrew Bailey, the new Minister of Statistics, to, um, you know, to lift that up the priority line because I think we need to, without good data, we can't... You know, yeah, yeah, them absolutely. Them well yeah, I mean, when you, I was just thinking as you're talking... When we talk, if we talk about rural health, if we talk about rural infrastructure, if we think about rural education, you've got to have some sort of marker to say, well, this is what rural is, and whether it's towns of seven and a half thousand dollars less or or settlements that are less than that, I don't know. You're right. You, is for example, is Cromwell rural? Is is Omaru rural? Yeah, well, well, good question. well, for some statistics they will be and some they won't be. So I guess that's that's something we've got to clarify. Only two or three days in, Michael. No, so no, 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 no. <laughs> but you see, that, but that's fascinating to me. You, the portfolio has been in existence. It's gone through two um, emanations that you've just pointed out uh, with Karen Malkinolti and Damien O'Connor. And yet almost the most basic thing of what the hell are we talking about hasn't been resolved and you've just taken it over. It's just odd, isn't it? Seriously. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it is a bit concerning, but you know the basics of rural community. You know, look, okay, you need a strong agricultural sector to feed in, but they need good healthcare access. They need good educational access. They need a police presence and increasingly connectivity. Uh, those four pillars are kind of the way I look at it, and you know, so that'll be a bit of a focus for me uh, in terms of how I. Uh, attack this particular challenge. Mm. No, fair enough. Um, Associate Agriculture, who's the Minister of Agriculture in this um, cabinet currently? Uh, Todd McClay. Oh, Todd's in charge, is he? Okay. Well, Todd's a good man, and um, he, his dad obviously got very strong, and I'm, I think there's a family relationship with um, Winston Peters and his family um, through the McClays. Um, you, you, I mean, I assume... You've had quite a bit to do with Todd already, have you? A little bit, although Todd uh, is also the trade, trade yeah. uh, minister, so I, I understand he's, he's already in the air out there uh, flying the flag for New Zealand. He's very um, uh, driven to get that side of the portfolio up and running. So how it work is, you know, he, as you alluded, he's a very experienced politician, uh, so he, he will be you know, obviously the front person for the uh, agricultural portfolio. 
but there is three of us as associates, uh, myself, uh, Nicola Gregg uh, from Canterbury uh, and Andrew Hoggard, uh, of course, from Axe. So we'll, we'll have delegations that will sort of sit below tide, so he will, he will uh, sort of look over us, umbrella over us, I guess, and a lot of the on-the-ground work. Uh, we're all hungry and raring to go, so once we finally decide on those delegations, we'll, uh, we'll be off to work. 